I, we, we sat there and decided, well, this is pretty strange. So she says, well, it's not going to be my daughter's bedroom. She says, that's going to be your poker room then. And so, it, so was that I moved was? my dresser and the, the daughter into the other room. So all I put in there was my poker table and stereo, you know. But, how, did you, uh, uh, how did you do it poker after that? Uh, not real well in that room. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it, well. I love the story because it's impossible. Yeah, um, you know, and you you sit there and you look at yourself. As, you know, I was looking at my wife and going, "Did this really just happen? I mean, did I have to pry this door open to get in here? You know?" And it's like, you know, it's what, possible. Yeah, it's impossible. It um, any other way? No, it couldn't have. I I really appreciate your story. That's yeah. two stories in a row. Well, I, I wanted to mention one other thing. I had moved back to Iowa. My dad had Alzheimer's and stuff, and I was driving down the street, and I saw they had an open house at that house. And I was telling my girlfriend, I said, you know, I used to own this place, and right. I said, let's go in and take a look, you know, and uh, yes. I'm talking to the realtor. I, I did want to check. There was a little cheap little under-the-counter kitchen light that I put in when I bought the place, and it was still there. But I talked to the realtor, and she said that house had sold seven times since I had it. And <laughs> seven stuff, so times? Nobody ever stayed, <laughs> stayed very long in it. I don't know if anybody else had trouble or not. But Did you tell the realtor about uh, Yeah, you just told me? Oh, yeah, she yeah. says, I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> I got to be here all afternoon. <laughs> I completely understand. And you know what? Despite the laws that say, I now anyway, that you have yeah. to tell somebody if a house is haunted, if it had, it was it was sold, bought and sold seven times. Yeah, and I don't think anybody ever mentioned it. Yeah, uh, this was. Let's see, I I bought it in. I think it was eighty six. Eighty three. Now, 
Excuse her. me. This was when she was driving? Yes, sir. Uh, and, and this shadow person or whatever was moving by itself and keeping pace? No, it was standing behind a sapling, which she thought that she saw a tree out of the corner of her eye. When she looked, uh, there was a sapling, okay. and the shadow figure was behind it, standing behind it. And as she drove past, its head followed her. She got the chill, and she picked up, you know, she, she sped up a little bit down the neighborhood. And as she made her way to the end of the neighborhood, the, the lights, starting where the, where the creature was, started going out one at a time uh -huh. until it reached her. <laughs> and once um, the lights reached her, yeah. she stopped. And that classic fight or flight kicked in, oh, yeah. and she got mad. She was angry. She was scared, but she was angry. So she threw it in reverse, and she rushed back to the point where the, where the creature was, yes. and nothing was there. It was just a sapling, and she had that. She had a cold sweat, and, and she was just sitting there, and the car was idling, and, and all the lights turned on at once. And well, you sir, have a, you, sir, have a wife with cojones. Let me tell you, uh, I, I would not have, out. yeah, that's right, I would not have gone back. There's no way I would have gone back, so. It was, she, it was, she it gave me a tough one. The first time. She is a tough cookie. I'm not afraid to go out in public. She, she's got my back. All right, my friend, thank you for the story. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. I sort of, I guess, insert myself into the stories as I hear them, and it's kind of like, what would I do? It would be bad enough. You see the shadow being uh, behind the tree. You see the head pop up, and the head follows you. And then the lights start going out. Would I go back? No. I'm being honest with you. No. I would not go back. So, big cojones. Uh, down to Texas and Chris. Hey, Chris. Roswell with Mr. Bell. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to finally get in to talk to you since the first time I heard you, you're talking to Mel Waters. Oh, uh, Mel Cole. Yes, I've been a fan ever since. The story goes that Mel <laughs> sold his hole to the... <laughs> he sold his hole to the government and moved to Australia where he's living presumably happily ever after, but I'd sure love to talk to Mel. Anyway, uh, proceed. Yes, sir. 25 years ago, I was a brand new Border Patrol agent. We had more trainees than journeymen, so they would stick two trainees together and say, go do your job. And years will shift that there might be four people working. So we had two guys upriver, myself and my partner downriver. Very little experience between the two of us. What would you, um, see, I hate this about but I, I, I have to know some things. Um, yes, sir. As a border patrol agent, uh, you said with very little training. So it's like they, they send you to the, when, when you say river, the Rio Grande? Yes, sir. You know, they send you down to the Rio Grande and they say, watch? It was very little experience in that training. I may have misspoke there. Okay. We had just gotten from the academy, but neither of us had a half a year in yet. Okay. So they send us down, they tell us to go fight crime, midnight. So we're driving down the river, looking for anything that we could see that didn't look right, not really knowing what we we're doing, but trying to get on the job to experience. We see a bonfire out on this hill that we used to refer to as the party house. It was, at the time it was out of town quite a ways, but now it's almost in town. And we drove towards it thinking, well, maybe somebody's down there, maybe some aliens, maybe some smuggling. Right. And at the time, we had switches that we could throw that would turn all the lights off in the vehicle. So if you hit the brakes or the backup light, nothing would come on. It wouldn't show where the vehicle was. Sure. So we turned out all the lights. We're driving down this long dirt road towards the river. And as we come around the corner, there's about 15 or 20 people standing in a huge circle around a giant bonfire. They're all 
wearing brown full-length robes. They got their hands up in the air, like they're doing some kind of religious ceremony. Ritual. Yes. I saw a movie called Race with the Devil with Peter Fonda and Warren Oates several years before this. Right. And that movie came to mind. I looked at these people just in time to see two of them turn towards us and start running at us in a, not an aggressive manner, but like a, like we didn't have any business in their little ritual. Oh, I'm I sure you did like, hmm? It was on, this is on the U.S. side of the border, of course, right? Yes, sir. It's about okay. two o'clock in the morning. Gotcha. And two of them start running toward you. Uh, and you were, I'm sure, too armed. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. But they were armed in Race with the Devil, too. Oh. <laughs> well, um, so I what do you, at, you guys, you two armed guys do? I looked at my partner, he looked at me, I threw it in reverse, and I hit the gas. <laughs> oh, my I said, guy. I don't see any immigration violation happening here. <laughs> I went backwards with no no lights. I made a 90 degree turn, and I didn't slow down until I hit the highway. I'm with you all the way. Once we oh. get to the highway, yes. we're trying to decide what to do because our nearest backup is a good 20, 30 minutes away. Right. There's one sheriff's deputy, and he's way the heck out of town. Right. Who would you who would you report this to? They didn't oh. remember this at the academy. No. Um. So, Local law enforcement? I don't know. Well, we're out of town. We were in the county, and like I said, there was one deputy working, and he was way the heck out of town. And we discussed it the rest of the night. Who should we report this to? And we could not come to a conclusion. So they were they the necessarily morning. breaking the law, really? None that I can see. So maybe God's law. Hmm. Well, we decided that we just weren't going to tell anybody. And we're going to try and pretend like it never happened. And I don't we, blame you at all. We've managed to keep our mouths shut for about a good 20 years. Well, finally, about three or four years ago, I was invited to tell my story on the other show. And unfortunately, the night that they called the house for me to talk, I had a schedule change and I had to work that night. So you never got to tell the story? Not to them, but it really upset me because I've listened to that show, like I said, ever since Mel's home. Uh -huh. So a couple of weeks go by and I'm teaching a class. And I mentioned to the class that I'd almost made it on the radio. And I told them this story about what had happened to me and my partner and how it would have been neat to tell people I'd managed to tell my story to the entire United States and parts of the planet. And one of the students said, hey, you know, about a couple of years ago, I was driving around down by the river, and I came across the exact same situation. Oh. Yeah, so apparently whoever these people are, they're still out there, and they're still doing their little ritual, and I have no idea who they are or what they're doing. And this person, uh, this student, uh, what did he do? Exact same thing. As you did, and as I would have done as well. Um, I really, really appreciate your telling this story on real radio. It was an exciting night. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, and take care. Glad you, uh, glad you came by tonight for Spooky Matter. I really, I just love, I love stories. What do you suppose that was? Probably not ghosts. But also, on the other hand, probably not a group of people that you would want to upset, armed or not. Ask me. Ben in California. Hi, Ben. Hey, is this me? It is you, Ben. Hey, Roswell. Uh, I've actually called in and called told you my ghost stories before, uh, but I've got one more story I haven't told you. You've told me ghost stories before? I called in on the open lines tonight. I, I was the guy that had been uh, physically assaulted by a ghost. Oh, 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 okay. But I've got one story that I don't know if it's ghost 
or not, but it definitely qualifies as spooky. All right. 